The Tournament Golfer's Playbook is one of the best books you can ever read if you're serious about playing tournament golf and or want to play better under pressure. If you've ever played in a tournament, you know it is not like a normal round of golf. It's not one where you just get to go out there and kind of hit and giggle and play with your buddies. This is a time where you're playing a harder golf course, difficult conditions, new people, and of course, you're gonna have to play by the rules of golf. Now, as a golf writer, I'm always curious about who is writing these golf books because unfortunately, sometimes people that can't even break 90 are creating golf books. The author, Mike Booker, goes through a ton of tips in this book to help you start playing better fast. As you can see here, his accolades are nearly in endless, not to mention he was inducted into the Texas Golf Hall of Fame alongside names like Ben Hogan. So one of the core themes of the book is deciding if you're a tournament golfer or someone who simply plays in tournaments. Here's a great quote. The golfer who plays tournaments always has a list of excuses for any poor score and it can be quite extensive. I'm certain you've heard him before. I had a six slip outs today. My back was killing me. I got the worst bounces. I could never catch a break. We've all been there. We've all heard people that talk like that, but that is defined as someone who simply plays tournaments, not a tournament golfer. To be a tournament golfer, you need to do these five things. Number one is take responsibility. Look, when you're out in a tournament, nobody is coming to save you. Everything is on you. And that honestly is kind of scary and why I think a lot of people don't even ever enter into tournaments, but when you learn how to take responsibility and understand that everything is on you, you can actually play better than you ever thought possible. Now, as Mike talks about a lot in the book, stop whining. Nobody cares about bad breaks that you get on the golf course. Perhaps the best example is when you bomb a drive right down the middle, you think this is gonna be perfect, I'm gonna have a great wedge in, I'm gonna make birdie walk up there and of course the ball sitting in a divot. Now while people that whine and say this shouldn't be a rule of golf, tournament golfer gets up there, analyzes the lie and goes about his business. That's what you need to do as well. Stop whining. The golf gods do not care nor do any of your competitors take care of business. The second lesson I got from this book is that you gotta be your own best friend. I know it sounds a little corny sometimes, but if you're out there and you're walking around and you're consistently telling yourself how much you suck at putting and why this hole always kills you, you are setting yourself up for failure. As he said in the book, Nothing can sap your belief in yourself or in your dreams more quickly and thoroughly than you, your own negative self-talk. Look, if you wanna play your best in tournaments or just casual rounds, you gotta change your self-talk. There's a lot of things you cannot control on the golf course, but your self-talk is absolutely one of them. So if you wouldn't say something to a competitor, don't say it to yourself. You gotta have compassion and forgiveness when you're out there, especially in tournaments when the conditions are tough, it's really challenging, it's easy to get down on yourself, but in reality, this is your time to be your own best friend, get yourself back up after a bad hole, a bad string of holes, and finish strong. The third lesson is to create a pre-shot routine. As Mike said in the book, a pre-shot routine is central to the tournament golfer. Why? Because it provides familiarity. When you're out there in a tournament, things feel unfamiliar. It's a new course, you're playing with new people. It might be the longest you've ever played a course. It might be the toughest course you've ever played. You're out of your comfort zone, but a routine helps you get back in there and have that familiarity to focus on simply swinging and playing golf. As Mike mentioned in the book, there have been some notable meltdowns in professional golf from simply dropping their routine when they needed it most. Mike mentioned Doug Sanders and the 1970 Open Championship at the home of golf, St. Andrews. He had a two foot putt to win. He didn't go through his routine. There was something on his ball. He went out of his way, he missed the putt, lost the tournament. That wasn't the only major meltdown that happened from a bad pre-shot routine either. Another good example is Greg Norman in the 1996 Masters. As Nick Faldo, his playing partner and eventual winner of the event said, I could feel the nervousness emanating from Greg. He gripped and re-gripped the club as though he could not steal himself to hit the ball. Look, a good routine is something all elite amateurs have and something all pros do. But you not only have to develop your pre-shot routine, you have to stick to it under pressure. The timing of your routine is arguably one of the most important things and why I created a video talking just about it because it will have a massive impact on your game. Before getting into lesson number four, let me know, do you play in tournament golf? Hit the comments down below. Lesson number four is gonna go against everything you've ever heard. Stop trying to make putts. You might be thinking, wait, what? Not try and make putts? Like your mind not even be able to understand that. And mine hadn't either until I heard it from him and a couple other coaches the last few years. What does it mean? Well, when you stop trying to make putts, you actually free yourself up. How many times have you stood over a putt that you wanted to make so bad and you just squeezed the life out of it and you probably left it short right in the middle or you blasted it by because you wanted to make it so bad? 
The thing is, is that when you want something on the golf course, it tends to make it harder to actually get. Instead, Mike's talks about focusing on the process not the result. When you go through your process, which is your pre-shot routine and your ability to work your way through decisions so you can make the right targets, read the putt correctly, you're gonna get the results you want. Tournament golfers go through their routines. Players who simply play in tournaments try and get results. Focus on your process when it matters most and you're gonna get better results. The final lesson that I really loved from this was just the importance of staying present. This is something I talk about in my book as well because Golf is hard enough when you're 100% present, but you're making it so much harder if you're dwelling on the past. If you just three putted and you're beating yourself up, you're still reliving it. Or if you're playing great and your mind starts to wander about the future, that 18th hole with all the water, you think if I just make par, 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 I'm gonna play my best round ever. When you start thinking in the future or in the past, you're taking away from the present moment and it's really easy to hit some bad shots. As Mike said, think about the past in small doses and make sure the reason you're there is a positive one. Do the same for the future, small doses for low anxiety reasons. Aiming to spend time in the present while balancing time between the past and the future is the key to successful tournament golf and a healthy life. So stay present, it will absolutely help your mental game and it's gonna give you the best chance of hitting a great shot. Now these five points are definitely gonna help you, but honestly, there's so many more gems that I could not recommend this book with Mike Moore. So check it out on Amazon, the link is down in the description. Plus, if you wanna watch the full interview with Mike, click this video now. I'm convinced when you read the Tournament Golfers Playbook, you're gonna be a wicked smart golfer in no time. Thanks again for watching.